Bart claims that eating liver may cause retinal toxicity. Is he right? Uh, I don't think Bart claims that. Bart claims that there may be a risk. That's a different thing, basically saying a definite. He basically says that I think their you know, excess amount of liver could end up in this. There's not much in the literature, but we know that it, when you look at case studies, it's usually people that are consuming like massive amounts beyond the physiological ranges. So in that regard, I, I also am against that sort of stuff. But within reasonable amounts, you get on a, on a carnival diet, not a problem. Um, it's actually indicated fat-soluble vitamins for a whole lot of regulations. You go too low, and that person was actually um, supplementing his patients with a lot of retinol, very high doses. That's why he, he got them into trouble. And now he's taking them off the supplements. They're coming back and recovering because, um, you know, they've rebalanced some of their systems. And now he's sending them the other way and they'll end up not having enough and then collagen degrading enzymes will not be regulated properly. And in particular, collagen matrix metalloproteinases 9 and 2. And if those are not regulated by retinol properly, you will get all sorts of skin problems and other collagen related problems throughout your body, particularly in your lungs. You can, you know, you may have an increase in susceptibility to asthma and, all, and bronchial things and a whole lot of other things. So, yep. Yeah, making good business for himself in that regard. Um, but I don't think he's actually thought this through. And even when he spoke, he had no evidence whatsoever. Some case studies and all those case studies are basically of people, I've seen the case studies, just excessive amounts of consumption. We're talking about 150,000 IUs or even higher every day, you know? So we're not talking about, you know, like somebody having some liver which may get anywhere between five to 30,000 IUs, depending on what the reading. We're talking about massive. So Bart has said quite clearly, even in that video in numbers, that is their potential risk. He believes that there is a potential risk. I sort of believe as well, where we may differ, me and Bart, will be on the degree. I think our bodies, if the, you've got a healthy liver, we can tolerate much more. We can store much more. We don't have a problem. If we don't have healthy livers, then that could be a problem where you don't have the capacity if you've got fibrotic tissue and all that. Remember, not all of us are ancestral. We've been doing very unhealthy things for a very long time. And also I've said, when you're losing weight, you're releasing fat-soluble vitamins in the bloodstream from your fat stores. So it's not a good idea to consume a lot of fat-soluble vitamins in those circumstances when you're losing weight or fat weight in particular. So you got to be really careful about these things and you have to nuance them properly because otherwise you end up making a whole lot of reductionist, nonsensical arguments. Um, and, I don't, and Bart's not making that. He's just saying there is a risk there. And I agree, there is a risk. Where we may... Um, I, don't, I haven't had a conversation with him specifically on this, um, if I was to have a conversation, maybe we would potentially disagree on the degree. But then there would be, the you know, once I put my arguments um, forward in terms of, you know, retinal storage in the liver and stuff like that, I think Bart would agree with me ultimately that it depends on a whole lot of factors. And I think he said that as well. So I don't think he's said a blanket thing that it is, you know. And he also said may. May is a, you know, one of those words that even he says in a lot of his epidemiological studies, may or may not. Are we clear? So it's not a claim that it is. It, it's a may, a question mark, maybe. So we need to be very careful, you know, not to say put words in people's mouths, Nick, you know. So, you know, that's not it. Because I... I do chat occasionally with Bart, and I have, and so, and I've got his private number as well and stuff like that. So, in that regard, I don't think he's making any of those sort of claims. To be honest, he's just basically concerned. He basically doesn't see the value. Well, he doesn't like liver. That's one thing. Um, and usually, people that do consume liver, um, if they're consuming small amounts and all that, it's not an issue. Um, 
if they're consuming large amounts, I usually question why are you consuming large amounts? It's not what our ancestors did. Even tribal people cut a bit of org like liver and all that and hand it out like fresh liver, and it's like a multivitamin, and they won't consume it all the time. You know, and sort of they, you know, most populations will get in a day anywhere between uh, five to ten thousand I use depending sometimes slightly less sometimes slightly more it will vary through the day but they're not going to get these mega doses that's when there is a potential risk but then again there are a lot of mechanisms and a lot of case studies which show that's not always the case so we're not sure the 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 reasons behind it what are the drivers so a lot of these case studies they never looked at these people, whether they had fatty liver, or most of these people are on a standard diet as well, which is really important to say. Being on a standard diet, they have the potential of basically already having fatty liver, fibrotic livers, you know, alcohol consumption or whatever else, fructose consumption will create liver fibrosis. Then trying to basically properly store in the liver, it can actually increase fibrotic, you know, because of already damaged in the liver so you need to store things properly in a certain way bind things properly in a certain way and things like that so these can be problems sometimes depends on the person and all that circumstances so it's a very nuanced thing you've got to be very careful you know it's like b vitamins you need b vitamins but penethenic acid you have too little a lot of things don't work in the body because it's so important. It's a critical thing in the body. That's why it's one of those B vitamins that get stored. I did a video with Bart. Now that his channel is sort of, maybe he'll bring it back or I may have to ask him for a copy to put it on my channel. But on the other hand, too much, you can end up with insomnia. So, you know, there is a certain amount of physiological range you'll get by eating animal foods. Stick to that. You don't need to supplement. You know, it's usually people that supplement that get out of those ranges already excessive of things that people normally didn't eat. You know, it's only when you're sick, people used to eat certain organ meats for because they were nutrient deficient and stuff like that, those extra nutrients. You know, when your immune system is weak, your immune, you know, when, sorry, when you get a virus, a cold or whatever, you upregulate your um, a whole lot of enzymes to basically build a whole lot of um, you know a whole lot of components of the immune system. These components have got receptor sites for a whole lot of micronutrients like vitamin D in particular, and many other things, retinol and a few other things. Well, that's when that storage stuff will go into those receptor sites and actually it's like the programs. It's like putting in the the coding for those. Um, enzymes to work properly so most ancestral people use these sort of stuff when you know for healing purposes they'll eat more of this or for or things like that we've lost a connection with food and we do bizarre things you know more is better for whatever reason these bizarre sort of um, attitudes outside of physiological ranges that people would practice normally and that's where i think some people are getting into trouble um, most people eating ruminant meats, some dairy or whatever, if they can tolerate and some eggs, if they can tolerate some seafood, if they can tolerate is usually not most people need Nick. But if you have occasional, some of this, you know, organ meats and stuff like that, not going to kill you. You know, it's when people get on this bandwagon of excessive, like I have to have liver, like a big slab of liver every day. Uh, really? <laughs> you know, that's just ridiculous, you know, that sort of stuff. You know? And then they end up getting not enough. They they end up basically getting very little because liver doesn't have a lot, has, more, has, has less zinc and has way more, um, you know, copper. And really, you really need to basically get more zinc than copper. It's just the way it is. And so all these sort of derangements can be for a number of reasons that happen when you actually consume very high levels of liver on a more consistent base. That's where the problem happens with a lot of this. People need to be very careful that we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, you know, 
You still will need certain micronutrients at a certain physiological range. Outside that range, it becomes a problem. It's like potassium. You still need potassium. Have too little potassium, that's a problem. Have too much potassium, that can kill you. They actually use it to kill people, um, uh, you know, in the... Uh, in the in the US in some states where they you know people that are found guilty of murder and they put them to death they actually use a a high uh, a supplemental thing which is high in potassium to basically kill people off so it's very lethal um uh, in that regard but that doesn't mean that potassium isn't required you can't go to zero you know because that's his argument you know oh, too much let's go to zero what you know, <laughs> ridiculous.